I have had Builder in a Bottle on my nails for easily over a year. Today, I'm taking it all off. So here's the thing. I lost a bunch of footage from that video. Most of the uh, removal is missing. Don't know what happened to it. I know I didn't film part of it. I forgot. And the rest, I just don't know what happened to it. But there is still some really great information at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to try to like piece it together for you um, to make it a little bit flowier, I guess, to make it flow better. So the beginning portion of this video, I discuss how long my nails have grown out and why you shouldn't let your nails grow out that long. So we're going to turn that into its own video. We're going to scrap the rest of the removal stuff that I tried to do and failed miserably. And then in a few weeks, I'll do another removal video for you. So I am going to pop in and out to try to connect those bits and pieces for you. Let's jump in. These are my nails. Um, I took off my index nail yesterday because it was bending something fierce and I did not want to risk it tearing and causing me pain. So I just removed it yesterday. I have footage of what these looked like before I removed it. I will pop those in right now, show you these awful grown out babies. I'm also going to take the time to show you why it is very important to not let your nails go four to six weeks. This is probably closer to eight weeks, honestly. This is exactly why. So on the broken finger, or the one I've already removed, you can see this crack right here. This right here happened because the, the growth, the apex, which you can see easier on this nail, grew out. All of your strength and structure is this part of your nail here, right here. It should be back here, right? All that structure, all that strength holding on back here. It has grown out to here. And that's where, basically, you, that's where we're going to get cracking is right across there. Because we have nothing back here holding this on, holding this stable. So you're going to either get cracking right here, which is exactly what happened. It cracked right across the apex. But also, if you're not going to get cracking, you're going to get lifting. See that? Yeah, it's talking to me. That hurts. <laughs> that is happening again. Well, the apex on this nail honestly isn't as big as the other ones. That is happening again because the structure should be here. All the structure, all the strength of your nail should be back here. When you hit your nail, when there's pressure on your nail, that is where it protects it. That is where it's like, I'm strong. I'm, I'm, I'm in charge. I'm going to keep this nail together. Once it is out here, once all the strength and structure is out here, it's almost like it's, it's heavy, right? It's almost like it's center of gravity. It's center of balance, if you will, has moved too far forward. And now it's heavy and there's nothing back here holding with structure, holding it on. I hope this is making sense. So basically you're just going to get lifting because you've got so much nail out here all the structure is towards the end of the nail and literally nothing back here. So it's like, it's like top heavy almost. Okay, so I just wanna jump in here to add that my nails in this clip are obviously very long. And so that is obviously affecting the way the structure is moving more. If your nails are shorter and you let them go this long, they probably won't see as much damage. You can absolutely let your nails go in between fills longer the shorter they are. For nails with an actual free edge that actually go beyond your finger, I wouldn't recommend going longer than three, maximum four weeks because of this structural issue. If your nails are just at the free edge, like just at your fingertip or not as long as that, you, I don't recommend it, but you can go much longer between doing your nails if they're shorter. And simply the reason for that is your structure isn't as extreme. So you don't have as much of an apex on short nails. So as it grows out, you're not getting that chunky thick bit towards the end of the nail. You still do, it's just not as extreme. And you don't have as much length at the end of the nail to like teeter-totter it the one way. 
if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. When you go back to your nail tech with your nails like this, it's no longer just an infill. Like it's no longer just filling the growth and readjusting the structure slightly. Like you take a little bit of the bulk off farther down the nail, you fill it and you're good to go. No, this, the structure has completely moved down the nail. You have full centimeters of naked nail here and all the structure has moved down here. At this point, you, we have to remove all of this bulk. We've got lifting probably to about here. So we're almost starting with a brand new overlay. So when you come in to your nail appointment and your nails are four, six, eight weeks grown out, basically anything beyond three weeks, it's no longer an infill, it's a rebalance. And your nail tech should be charging you more for a rebalance because they're using way more product. It's gonna take way more time because we are basically building the nail again. Not, not, um, sculpting a tip necessarily, but we are building the structure of the nail from scratch, essentially, after it's gone this long. Okay, so that's what I'm salvaging from this video. I just wanted to give you those little tidbits of information about the structure and the growth of your nails and why it's not the best idea to let them grow out that long. I know you think that it's going to save you money or time or what, but in the long run, it's probably not. Because if you're doing it yourself, it's going to take you more time because you've got to build the nails. It's going to take you more product, therefore cost you more money. If you're going to a nail tech, they're going, or they should be charging you more for doing this extra work. And if the appointment is going to last longer, or you won't be able to get the exact nails you want because the appointment is taking so long to just get your basic set done with one color. And now you're not getting all the art you want because you and your nail tech are having to spend all this time on nails that are so grown out. If you were to come in a little bit sooner so that they aren't so grown out and creating all the damage and wonkiness to your nails. It would be a faster appointment because there's no damage. There's no lifting. There's nothing that has to be removed or fixed. Just infilling the growth, adjusting the structure a tiny bit, and doing art. So you're going to get the nails you want in probably less time. Those are the uh, basic reasons why you shouldn't let your nails go an extreme amount of time between fills. It's not good for your nails plain and simple, especially if you're trying to keep your natural nails healthy, you got to go more often. You got to do them more often, plain and simple. No way around it. Unless you can stop your nails from growing, those are the, that's the only option. So go ahead, leave a thumbs up if you like this video and you found it helpful, because it helps me. And go ahead and subscribe. It's free. If you have a YouTube account, you can subscribe to any channel for free. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!